In this lesson, we're going to have a look at how we construct a cumulative frequency histogram and polygon. The cumulative part is just like your progressive total. So we'll have a look at how we do that and then construct our histogram and polygon after that. So remember, our histogram is a type of column graph where there's no gaps in between. Our polygon is a type of line graph. Our horizontal axis represents the scores and our vertical axis represents the community frequency. So not a lot different from just a frequency histogram and polygon, but our graphs will be a fair bit different in a way. So, first example, let's construct a community frequency histogram and polygon for the following data set. But before we can do that, we need to calculate the community frequency. So we need to add an extra column here. There's no tally marks because the scores are already being organised, so we now know the frequency. We've got scores from 7 to 12. It's the same data I've used in some examples before. There's my frequencies. And what we're going to do is put a community frequency column on the end here and complete that. So to complete our community frequency histogram, We've got a score of seven, and if we place all the scores in order, there will be five sevens that I write down first of all. So the first five scores will all be sevens. So my cumulative um, frequency here, my progressive total for just the sevens is five altogether. If I then count the eights afterwards, there's eight eights. So if I've got five sevens and eight eights, then I'll add my 5 and 8, and that will tell me that I will have 5 plus 8, 13 scores altogether. So over here, my 5 plus 8, bring it over, I've now got 13 as my community frequency. So that means the first 13 scores are 7 or 8. The first 5 scores are all 7. So now if I continue that process to work out my next value in the community frequency. I will take my 13 and I will add on the 6 because there's 6 9s and that will tell me that there's 13 plus 6 is 19 scores altogether so far. So I write that over here. So my community frequency is 19. So again if I place all the scores in order the first five are seven, the first 13 are either seven or eight, the first 19 are either seven, eight or nine. And I continue that process. So 19 plus 11 is 30, write that in there. Then 30 plus four is 34 and 34 plus eight is 42. So that tells me there's 42 scores altogether. And if I actually found the total of the frequency column, and put that down here, then that would tell me the same, that there's 42 scores altogether. So if you've got that total down the bottom here, which I don't, that's just a way of confirming that these two should be the same so that you've got those right. So now that we've completed that table, let's construct our graph. Well, we need our X, sorry, not our, our horizontal axis, which is our scores, seven through to 12. And again, you notice I've gone one extra just in case. And I've put my half marks in where each column starts and finishes. And my community frequency is my vertical axis. But I've got to be careful. My highest value in here is 42. So I've got to make sure I go up to 42. Now I could have a really tall graph, which means I've got some really tall columns when I'm getting these end ones. Or I could choose a scale that's a little bit more appropriate um, so I don't have to always go up by ones. Um, in this case, I'll probably go up by fours. So four, eight, twelve. So I've just got to be a little bit careful when I make my construction. Choose numbers that are easy to work out. And if you've got grid paper, it's certain, or a grid book, it certainly makes constructing this a lot easier. So my score of seven. Its community frequency is 5, so I've got to come up to 5, which is a little bit above the 4. So we do that. And as I said, if you've got grid paper, you would be a lot more accurate than what I am here, but that's pretty close to my 5 there if we go across. 
My score of 8, its cumulative frequency is 13 because I've gone 5 and another 8 makes 13. So I have my column going up to 13, which is just above the 12 here. And I continue this process, so 9 goes up to 19, 10 goes up to 30, 11 goes up to 34, and 12 goes up to 42. So what we've just completed there is a cumulative frequency histogram, which means it's a progressive total, so these columns do get larger as we go along. Unless, of course, I get a frequency of zero somewhere here, which means that I'll have two columns exactly the same height, but never up and down for cumulative frequency. So there's a cumulative frequency histogram. And what we'll now have a look at is a cumulative frequency polygon. To do that, we're placing dots. But what's different from just the frequency histogram, our cumulative frequency dot does not go in the middle. It goes at the end of, or the top right-hand corner of the column. So it's like halfway between the 7 and 8, and it seems unusual, but you'll see in another video that why this is actually useful when we do this. So there's my first dot that I've placed there. My second dot will go in the top right-hand corner there, so let's place it in. My third dot will go in the top right-hand corner, so let's place it in. Then my fourth dot, and my next for the 11, and my last one goes right at the top right hand corner. So we've placed our dots, we then need to join them with straight lines, but our first line actually starts from here this time, at the beginning of the column, and will end there, and that will actually make our polygon there, including this part here of the column but we don't actually join that back down when we finish. So let's join them up. And there's our cumulative frequency polygon. And this cumulative frequency polygon is also called an ogive. So sometimes you'll hear that terminology, um, but most of the time you'll hear a cumulative frequency histogram for the columns and cumulative frequency polygon for the line graph. So let's have a look at another example then. This time it's for grouped data. So instead of scores there, I've got classes, and you'll recognize this data from when I've done some group data exercises before and videos. So my class centers is the center of this class by adding them together then halving it. So to find the middle of two numbers, add them together, find the total, then halve it. So let's start our construction. But before we can do that, we need our cumulative frequency. So I needed to add that extra column in. And remember, it's our progressive total. So 5, 5 and 8 makes 13. 13 and 6 makes 19. 19 and 11 makes 30. 30 and 4 make 34. And 34 and 8 make 42. And again, I deliberately chose an example where I didn't have to change much and I've got this frequency the same as before. Okay, so let's set up our graph. So we need our horizontal and vertical axes along there. So my class centers along the horizontal, my cumulative frequency up the vertical, remembering to choose an appropriate scale there so I don't end up with a really tall graph or one that's what way too short to be able to recognize differences. So when we do that, we end up with our cumulative frequency histogram. Our class center of 12 has a cumulative frequency of 5. Our class center of 17 has a cumulative frequency of 13. And we complete our graph, as I've shown you in earlier videos. So there's my cumulative frequency histogram. To do my polygon, remember the dots get placed in the top right-hand corners of the columns, all the way up to the top there. And then join them with the beginning. And we go and do so, and there's my cumulative frequency polygon on top of the histogram for the group data. So not much different from the previous one, except I've got class centers down there. 
So I hope you found this useful. And remember, the more that you practice it, the easier it becomes and easier to remember. So just remember the cumulative frequency is our progressive total there. And we join to the top right hand corners of the columns. And we're going to find that useful in a later video when we're finding medians. So enjoy.